So this is the first video in the unit of quantifying chemical compounds. Um, this is chapter 10 from your textbook. Remember, we have online um, access to the textbook. So at any time, if you don't feel like you're getting the type of support you need, then you can always turn to that online textbook for an, as an additional resource. So chemistry is a lot like math where we build on top of old concepts. And so I'm just going to remind you of some of the concepts that we've covered so far in the school year that you need to remember or at least, um, you know, carry over to this unit. So the first um, concepts come from the moles unit, which is actually a subset of the atomic structure unit. We need to remember how to identify particles as either being an atom a molecule or a formula unit. Now, whenever we see molecules, let's go ahead and abbreviate that as MC. Don't abbreviate molecules as MOL because that's our abbreviation for moles. And then whenever we see formula units, let's abbreviate that as FUN and not just FU for obvious reasons. We need to remember from the moles unit that we have two different ratios or relationships that we're dealing with. We have one ratio that deals with um, moles to atoms, molecules, or formula units. Particles are um, what they're also referred to as. And this is Avogadro's number. And we'll talk more about when we use that. We also want to remember that one mole of an atom is the mass in grams from the periodic table. Then from the naming and formulas unit, which we just wrapped up, we need to remember how to write a formula from a chemical name, and we need to know how to count the number of atoms or ions in a given compound. So you'll see all of those things built into the lesson, um, but just know that it's important that you learned all of these things. And if you haven't, then I'm going to give you a quick refresher right now in this first video, or you can always go back and watch the other videos or the, look at the old PowerPoints for those two units units. So this is the first example of um, an old problem that we would have um, seen. Uh, if I ask you to determine the number of atoms or moles and ions in aluminum carbonate. So this is actually, this is not an old problem. This is really just making sure we understand the vocabulary correctly. The first thing I would do is I would hit pause and I would try to write a formula for aluminum carbonate. Remember that um, this is an ionic compound. So if you wanna go ahead and hit pause and write that out now, that might be a good idea. But um, I'm going to go ahead and keep going with the video. So remember that aluminum carbonate is an ionic compound. Aluminum has a 3 plus charge. Carbonate is an ion from the back of the periodic table. We can apply the crisscross method here, or we can just keep adding ions until our charges cancel out. And um, we end up with a formula of Al2. CO3 inside of parentheses, super important that you have them in parentheses, and then we have our three on the outside. Now, uh, we to quickly get this formula from the crisscross method, remember we can take just the superscript and crisscross their position. So the three will go outside of the parentheses here, the two will go underneath the positive symbol, and that's how we can get aluminum carbonate. So with the correct formula, now I'm going to show you how we can determine the number of atoms, the number of moles, and ions in aluminum carbonate. So when it comes to formula units, we use the word formula units whenever we are dealing with um, ionic compounds. We don't use this word whenever we're dealing with molecules. That would be the word molecules. So if I had one formula unit of aluminum carbonate, that would be equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 formula units of aluminum carbonate. This is Avogadro's number, and uh, we can use Avogadro's number anytime we're talking about atoms, molecules, or formula units, as long as the formula behind this unit um, correctly correspond. So like this is a formula unit, so we're able to use that unit. 
Um, here's what a formula unit is. A formula unit is um, just one formula of an ionic compound. And so in one formula unit of aluminum carbonate, this is what it would look like if we listed out the ions. If we kind of did it the original way I, I taught you how to write ionic compounds. If I wanted to identify the number of ions, right now I see a total of one, two, three, four, five ions. But I could also further describe this as having two atoms of aluminum aluminum, three atoms of carbon, see here, one, two, three, and then a total of three, six, nine atoms of oxygen. So this is one ratio, one, one relationship I could write between the formula unit and um, in terms of atoms. But let's say I asked you to talk in terms of ions. I could also say that one formula unit of aluminum carbonate contained two ions of aluminum or three ions of carbonate. I would probably not ask you to list all of these in a real question, but I just want to show you all the different types of ratios or relationships that can be created from one formula unit of aluminum carbonate. I'm just showing you how you can describe um, aluminum carbonate in more detail. Now, if you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, it's a lot of work to write this out, you could potentially just look at the formula. Like three ions of carbonate, that's what our three on the outside of the parentheses represents. Three ions of carbonate, two ions of aluminum, and then this three, when you're determining the atoms, you could just distribute it out, but don't actually distribute it out when you have a formula. So if I um, wanted to describe aluminum carbonate in terms of moles, I'm going to show you how I could write some ratios out of that. A mole can be anything. It just represents an amount. So I could say that if I had one mole of aluminum carbonate, just like I do here, I also have two moles of aluminum. I have three moles of carbon. One, two, three, similar to the atoms. I have nine moles of oxygen, similar to the atoms, three, six, nine. Or I have two moles of aluminum ions or three moles of carbonate. So you're going to notice these are the same exact values from the last slide, but now I'm using the word moles. And that's because I'm describing one mole of aluminum carbonate this time. So we just want to make sure we understand the vocabulary. Uh, and that's what I'm doing with these, these first examples of these ratios. So just to further understand what aluminum carbonate represents, aluminum carbonate represents two aluminum atoms and three carbonate polyatomic ions. Remember how we learned about polyatomic ions? They're covalently bonded um, atoms that it in itself they each represent an ion so this is a carbonate ion this is a carbonate and this is a carbonate ion but all of this together represents aluminum carbonate. Alright, so this is actually an example of a review question from the Atomic Structure Unit. If I ask you to determine the moles of magnesium there are in 1.23 times 10 to the 24 atoms of magnesium, I hope that you realize this looks like a dimensional analysis problem. So whenever we have a dimensional analysis problem, we want to start off with G, W, and R. The given in this problem is the only number given to you, 1.23 times 10 to the 24, but we want to make sure to also include a unit as well as the substance. So I'm going to be super particular about the way you do this because the more detailed you are, the better you will be when we get to the harder unit in the semester. So here's my given, 1.23 times 10 to the 24 atoms of magnesium. Next up, I need to determine what I want, the W in my problem. Determine the moles of magnesium. So I'm going to go ahead and write moles of magnesium, and it's also okay to abbreviate moles as M-O-L. The next thing I want to do is I want to figure out the ratio between atoms and moles. Whenever I see the word atoms, molecules or formula units, I'm reminded to use Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and here is how I would place it in a ratio form. One mole of magnesium is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of magnesium. Remember this number here can only have a unit of atoms 
molecules or formula units. Since I have a complete pathway to get us from the unit of the given, the given unit to the wanted unit, so atoms to moles, atoms to moles, I can go ahead and start the problem. We always start our problems with the given over one, and since I have atoms here in the given position, diagonal from that, I'm going to go ahead and place my unit of atoms along with its value. So my 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms is placed diagonal from the given simply because they have the same unit. So remember, this is our given over 1, and anything past the given over 1 is just going to represent our ratios. Above this value, we're going to go ahead and put the other side of the ratio, 1 mole of magnesium. And now we can just double check and make sure our units cancel out. I have atoms of magnesium in the top, atoms of magnesium in the bottom. Those two things cancel out. I have moles of magnesium at the top here, which is great. And now I want to go ahead and calculate this. With a calculator, you can type in your calculator 1.23 press that EE button or just EXP depending on their um, brand of calculator to represent times 10 to the. So you would type in 1.23 EE and then 24, make sure not to hit any other additional buttons, and then you're going to divide by 6.02, hit that EE button again, and then 23. Remember our rules for significant figures on top of that. Since we have three sig figs in the given, we're going to give our answer three sig figs. So um, now that we have our answer and it's a correct number of significant figures, we can check our units out. Our units cancel out diagonally, leaving us with moles of magnesium, which is great because we want moles of magnesium. And that is our final answer. So just as a reminder with dimensional analysis, this is just a simple one-step problem, but the general rules of dimensional analysis tell us that any values in the numerator should be multiplied together. Any values in the denominator, we divide by each of the values in the denominator. However, you might have noticed that I just said 1.23 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, because when you multiply and divide values of 1, it's not going to numerically change your answer. You might as well just skip that and save yourself the time. So, um, yeah, that's the final answer there. Here's the next example. If you want to hit pause and try this one on your own, I would strongly encourage you to do so. Otherwise, um, just keep watching. If we're going to determine the mass of 3.50 moles of copper, we can determine the given as being the only number given to us in the problem. 3.50 moles, and let's not forget the the symbol for copper, which is Cu. Don't confuse this with Co or just C. The, the symbol is Cu. When you determine, um, the want is for us to determine the mass, but remember, mass is not a unit. Grams is a more proper unit for mass, so really we're looking for grams of copper. Now, whenever we are dealing with the ratios, we're always looking for keywords in the given and the want. In the last example, we saw a keyword of atoms, and whenever we see the word atoms, that reminds us to use Avogadro's number. But whenever we see the unit of grams, that should remind us, look at the periodic table. This unit represents grams per moles, which we call a molar mass, and so this is the ratio we're going to use. One mole of copper equals 63.546 grams of copper. So this ratio came straight off of the value from the periodic table, and you should know to do that whenever we see the unit of grams. So now we can start the problem with the given over 1. I have 3.50 moles of copper over 1. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my units cancel out diagonally. When I look at the ratios, I'm going to look for my unit of moles, and it's right over here. I'm going to take my one mole of copper and put it in the bottom so that the units and the substance cancel out diagonally. I'm going to put the 63.546 grams of copper in the top, and now I can go ahead and calculate the value. I multiply any values I see in the numerators, 3.50 
times 60, 3.546, and then I'm going to divide by any values I see in the denominator. In this case, I only see a bunch of 1s, so I'm not going to divide anything. I'm going to save myself that time. And when I round that number to 3 significant figures, because the given has 3 significant figures, I um, have 222 as my answer. For the unit, I'll make sure my units cancel out diagonally, and whatever is left over in the problem is part of the answer. So my final answer is 222 grams of copper. The next thing you want to do is you want to take a look at the practice box in your note packets. Now with the practice box, some of these problems aren't going to be exactly like we just covered in the previous slides, but they're going to just help us to understand um, what formula units are a little bit better so that we're kind of easing our way ourselves into the unit. So like this first question asks us to determine the number of sulfate ions. Um, so if I have one formula unit of this, and I ask you how many sulfate ions there are, what you're going to notice and recognize is that this is sulfate, and there's only one of them. So that must mean there's only one ion of sulfate. If I ask you how many formula units um, of sulfate there are in aluminum sulfate, you can see here that I have given you the, um, the formula name, and you actually need to write a formula out for it. And if you uh, go ahead and hit pause, write a formula for aluminum sulfate, because that might make all the difference. And if you are now finished with writing your formula for aluminum sulfate, I hope you have something like this. Well, I hope you started off by remembering aluminum um, sulfate is ionic, so we need to find our charges first. You can make the charges cancel out, and you get a final formula of this. And if you don't have the correct formula for aluminum sulfate, you definitely will not have the correct number of sulfate ions, which in this case is 3. So we have three ions of sulfate in aluminum sulfate. So in practice two, this is a dimensional analysis problem. Hit pause so that you can practice this dimensional analysis problem on your own. But if you're ready to keep watching for the answer, then keep watching. To determine the number of moles in 11.9 kilograms of aluminum, you want to determine the given, which is 11.9 kilograms of aluminum. The want in this case is the number of moles. And then um, we are going to determine some ratios. Remember that it, this is a video, so at any time if you feel lost, you can always rewind the video and backtrack. There's no harm in that, and that's the beauty of um, doing these uh, video, watching these video lessons. It's kind of at your own pace. So um, let me go ahead and keep going with this problem for those of you who are ready to do so. In the given, I see a unit of kilograms, which I know is really similar to grams. So really, this is talking about mass. I see the unit of moles in the want, and so whenever I see mass involved in any way, shape, or form, I know that has something to do with the periodic table. But I have to keep that kilograms in the back of my head. So whenever I'm coming up with ratios, I know that the, um, the periodic table will help me use mass properly, and so this value from the periodic table for aluminum, I'm going to write a ratio of 1 mole of aluminum equals 26.982 grams of aluminum. I'm not going to forget about that kilograms because I always know that there are 1,000 grams of aluminum in 1 kilogram of aluminum, or anything in that matter. Make sure you remember the 1,000 goes with the grams and not with a unit of kilograms. So now um, I'm just going to check my quick pathway through the ratios to make sure I can get from kilograms to moles. So through my ratios, I have kilograms to grams, grams to moles, and I'm all good with my ratios. And let's start the problem with a given over 1. So with the given over 1, I have kilograms over 1. And now I'm going to make my unit of kilograms cancel out diagonally by placing this value diagonal from the given, simply because it has a unit of kilograms also. So one kilogram of aluminum goes diagonal from the given, and the other side of the ratio is 1,000 grams of aluminum, so that goes in the top. I'm going to take my grams of aluminum, and I'm going to put it diagonal from that the other grams unit, and this is all just 
like a little puzzle to help me solve the problems is how dimensional analysis works and I'm going to put the other side of the ratio in the top so one mole of aluminum so now I have a, a two-step problem here and I just want to remember that whenever I have dimensional analysis problems go ahead and multiply all the numerators together 11.9 times a thousand and I'm going to divide by any value I see in the denominator actually I'm going to say this all out just in case you have examples in the future that aren't ones I want to make sure you know how to approach those problems so in this case I would do 11.9 times a thousand times one divided by one divided by one divided by 26.982. Round it to three significant figures because the given has three significant figures. I have 441. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to cancel out all my units diagonally to make sure I end up with one unit in the answer, and the unit in the answer is moles of aluminum. And there's my final answer 441 moles of aluminum.